Get ready. Gaming News. I'm your host, Mr. 6507, bringing you the newest gaming news. It's been a while. Again. I seem to be saying that every time we have videos on here. But, I'm still making them. Therefore, let's get started. Now, this episode focuses a little bit more on something different than what the fridge would normally be for news. I would like to take a moment to focus on actually talking about hardware as I've made my transition during college from a console gamer to a PC gamer. And it's kind of um, a transition made by my um, chosen major in college, which is computer engineering, so I kind of want to focus on it. But I've also um, had fun building some PCs and it's become like a hobby of mine to look up different specs. So, with PAX East happening just last week, let's take a look at the hardware battles that we have going on right now. So, if you aren't in the know about graphics card companies, or if you just kind of learned about it a little bit, there's two companies out there. There's AMD and there's NVIDIA. Now, AMD started out as a processor company and eventually worked their way over to graphics cards with the buying out of ATI. The same happened with NVIDIA as they were just a small company and bought 3D Max and ended up becoming a quite large graphics card company. So you have these two ends of the spectrum. To give reference of what they are, NVIDIA hasn't really ever designed a console's graphics card. But they technically, according to most, make the best graphics cards on the market. AMD has designed the GameCube's graphics card the one inside the Wii, Xbox, Xbox One, sorry, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS4, PS3, yeah, so AMD's designed a lot of stuff. So these two hardware giants have been battling it out for almost 10 years now, just going at it, boom, 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 trading cards. And uh, we've kind of hit one of those moments in time or one of those glorious things that's happened. Now, it sounds, if you would look back on it, this has only happened two other times in history so far, where we've had the battles of the giant cards. So, like, there's always been the big car contender cards, but we're getting into the hard stuff right now. So let's begin. So, four weeks ago, NVIDIA released specs of their graphics card, which isn't on the market yet, called the Titan Z which the Titan graphics card is the highest line of graphics card you can buy from NVIDIA. It has the most cores. At the time, it, all, it pretty much set the world record for the most cores in one graphics card. It was the best thing on the market you could buy. And they started at $1,000. In comes the Titan Black, which has a better infrastructure. It's a completely different design of the chip. Still a whole crap ton of cores in one little card because when you're talking about graphics cards, it's all about the cores, baby. They basically overclocked it, raised it up, up the ante. In the meantime, AMD was working over here and doing their thing, so it didn't matter. Now, NVIDIA's been designing this stuff. It's top secret. This is, you know, kind of crazy stuff. They designed the Titan Z. So now we're past the Titan Black. Titan Z. So this has two Titan Blacks, two Titan Blacks on one card. It has the highest specs of a card to that time. Now I've held one card of this caliber ever in my life and it was a Radeon 5970. That card came out in 2009 and had 2000 cores. It was two, it was two GPUs. It was a behemoth. It was broken and it was like holding the Holy Grail. We're back to that. It's like equivalent to the big block wars, guys. Like, 440 
versus 460. Boom! So yeah, let's look at the specs of this bad boy. So the Titan Z in its two graphic cards has a combined 5,760 cores running at 800 megahertz. That's a lot. And I mean, compared to what a CPU and a computer is, 800 megahertz doesn't sound like a lot, but think about every single one of those cores going off at once. It's the difference between a low revving V12 and a really high revving single cylinder lawnmower. That's the difference. So also coupled with this, when you load in textures on a video game, say you want that HD texture pack in Skyrim, that takes up RAM, but it's not the RAM that you stick in your computer that are the sticks that are about that big. It's actually RAM on your video card. So, to make sure that no one ever runs out on this card, they included 12 gigabytes of RAM. In reference, my Super Crate box, and I had to make sure of this, has two gigs of RAM in its graphics card. What? So, the tide has been thrown, and the most expensive graphics card to date has been thrown at people. So what does AMD do? Something that they've never done before. They took two graphics cards and stuck them together, and they said, hey, our stuff runs really hot. Let's make the cooling good. Boom. Insert the R9 295X2. I mean, look at all those numbers. It's got to be good. So, now we have AMD versus NVIDIA. Battle of Bowie. And this card has amazing specs. Look at this. 5,632 stream processors. It's the exact same style of stream processors and cores are the same thing. 8 gigabytes of RAM. And it doesn't underclock itself like the Titan Z does. It's clocked at the full speed of both of the original cards. Shots fired, man. I don't even... This is... The best part? $1,500. One, five, zero, zero. Zero. But that's, that's an eight. Close enough. Now, the reason I bring this up and not focusing on the games that PAX East, which I will focus somewhat on next week. The fact that these two cards just came out sets an unprecedented amount that we are going to jump into the next step in gaming again. And at least PC gaming. And we're going to get held back by the console. But it's going to be a glorious moment for the PC Master Race for the time being. Because we're going to go whoop, and we're going to have that much more, that much cheaper because of Steam sales and everything else. It's gonna be a moment of great history, and I wanna see it go through. So, to like, bring you both sides of this battle, to explain to you what's going on, AMD normally goes cheap and toasty on their graphics cards, and NVIDIA goes expensive and well-built. It's kind of like the difference between car companies. I mean, there's nothing you can really argue when hardware, it's it's really that much of a difference. Now the things that AMD has been pushing out are the new R series, True Audio, and Mantle, which can run on console. AMD wants to uh, push the boundaries of what they can do between their CPUs and GPUs. And it could get pretty steamy up in there between what's going on. In the meantime, the video's hooking up with the old stream and saying, oh yeah, you got hot and toasty? We got cool and efficient. So, they're pushing out the new 750Ti on the new Maxwell series of graphics cards, which basically took the Kepler series and just shrunk it and made it more efficient in a smaller bundle. So eventually, they'll go from having a giant fan to a tiny little passive cooler, and then they'll say, hey, remember that giant fan? We put 40 cards on that one chip. Bah! They also have their own monitor things going on. It's like two evil companies battling for our benefit. It's Team Fortress 2. It's red versus blue. It's glorious. And we get to witness it. That's the focus of this year's and this episode's. That's the focus of this episode's news show. Leave your comments, whatever. 
subscribe if you want to catch the next episode, provided it does go up next week. I can't make any uh, benefits because I do have to actually um, program some things because I'm taking programming classes. So yeah, but until then guys, remember, stay cool with the fridge.